Ladies and gentlemen, before we have our 10 minutes with God, there's a news flash in case you hadn't heard. The Supreme Court of the United States has lifted the ban that California had on indoor worship. I can't read the entire thing to you now. I refer you to either ChristianityToday.com or APNews.com for the information. We are going to have a plan to bring people into the sanctuary here. We are going to follow the rules, wearing masks, using sanitizers, six feet or more, but we are now able legally to have people in worship in the sanctuary. Thank you, Lord. We now return you to 10 Minutes with God with Martin. Oh, hi. Uh, um, one of my friends complained that uh, I didn't know enough about being black, so did a little homework. I hope the guy that you were seeing a moment ago didn't waste your time, because I want to make sure you see something. This is February 14th, and everybody's talking hearts and flowers, but that's not where my mind is going. Where my mind is going is this guy. Today is Frederick Douglass's birthday. And a few days ago, I got to see an interesting article about Mr. Douglas, talking about the fact that he did not want to be the happy black man, you know, justifying slavery and stuff like that. So in every one of the photographs that you see him in, you see him frowning and scowling and determined. Because this is a man who wants freedom. This is the man who wants justice. This is the man who wants equality. And none of the pictures show him without that scowl. Except one. This one. What do you notice? Well, that lady over there is his wife, and the lady standing behind them is his sister-in-law, her sister. But look at Frederick Douglass here. This is the one photograph of him where he's smiling. Here he is, having the one thing that he wanted for himself and for black folk. Family, equality, love, caring, justice. This is the kind of thing that Frederick Douglass fought for all his life. It's one of the reasons why, near the end of his life, when a young man asked him what he should do with his life, immediately Douglas says, agitate. Agitate, agitate, agitate. Now, don't get me wrong. Unlike the people on January 6th, he agitated for something, not against it. He wanted progress, not decay. He wanted to build up our nation, not destroy it. He wanted to fulfill this scripture. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides through the deserts. His name is the Lord. Exalt before him. Father of the fatherless, protector of widows, is God in his holy habitation. God sets the solitary in a home. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity. But the rebellious dwell in a parched land. That's what he wanted. He wanted godly people living in a godly country, free, and free of bigotry, free of prejudice, free of ignorance. The whole point behind Black History Month is to realize that the whole point was to restore people to what God wanted them to have. What was that phrase from the Declaration? Oh yeah, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Black people had none of the above. He fought to give us all three. And God wants us to fight to give people equality, liberty, and happiness. Because that is the nature of how he created us. He created us to want these things, to cherish them, and to share them with other people. One of the things we as Christians think about is when and how 
we exercise Christian liberty. For example, the mention of the Supreme Court decision coming down and slapping down some local and state offices forbidding church meetings. They're supposed to be limited, supposed to still use masks and sanitizer, and respect the fact that the science says we have to be careful for each other. But that's the same thing here. Care about each other. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is to be shared. The whole point behind the 400 plus years that black and men and women have had to fight is that they want their share. Nothing more, nothing less. And we as believers in Jesus Christ, regardless of our race, regardless of our nationality, have a duty to help each other into that kind of life. Douglas did not see all that he wanted, but he got to see some of it. And he asked others, including us, to work hard to make that happen. This one is going to be short and sweet. I'm going to ask you a question for the rest of Black History Month. And by the way, I like the man who answered the question, when is Black History Month? What month are you in? Every month is a month to think about liberty. Every month is a month to think about freedom. Wait a minute. Um, yeah, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King put it this way. It's always the right time to do the right thing. And I'll leave you with a little bit of politics, but not politics politics, religious politics. You remember the time that uh, Mr. Trump held up a Bible in front of a church? upside down. I'm personally believing that if he had opened that book, he might have gone to the book of Micah and he might have seen these words. He has shown thee, O man, what is required of thee. To love mercy, to do justice, and to walk humbly with your God. I'm sorry to say this, but a lot of people in Washington and in other state houses don't want to follow those rules. And that's why that last part of the verse, the rebellious dwell in a parched land, is so pertinent. We've forgotten the fact that we say, God bless America, but that comes after America bless God. We've refused to listen to him. We've refused to listen to his word. We've refused to listen to the call that he gives us for freedom and for equity. And as a result, we think we're in the middle of a desert. We're starving. We're thirsty. We need to listen to what God Almighty is telling us and how to love him and to love each other. That's a very important point. And I'm going to ask you a favor. Please, this week, next week, next month, for the rest of your life, yes, it's a long task, but it's an important one, look to places where you can restore people. Look to places where you can show equity and liberty and freedom and justice for other people. Because the fact is, they're human like you. They deserve the same blessings you have. Thank you very much for listening to me and for listening to our program. We're grateful for all of you who have given your support in whatever way you've done. And to you I say, thank you very much. If you want more information about our ministries and about our program, you can go to www.stpaul l-u-t-h-e-r-a-n-l-a dot org or dot com. Either one will work. Instagram, Facebook, and other sources are available there. And, if you're so inclined, there's a donate button. We don't twist arms, but we ask people who believe in us and who believe in this program and these ministries to help us as we defray those expenses, especially now with COVID-19 and with all the other problems that we've had. Again, 
whatever you give, whatever you can't give, or whatever you care about. Your prayers and your love are very, very appreciated. Thank you so much. God give you a good day. God give you a great week.